First I make like a wooden back and then I use a nail gun to, to nail the first layer of aluminum um, and that's what this stuff is, it's just really thin aluminum flashing that people put on houses. I first started it was more of a traditional diorama so like the pieces were layered like this, you know, like one from each other in parallel and then I realized that the aluminum offered so much more potential for kind of laying it out in all different angles, which is really what I was going for anyways. I'm trying to develop all these angles to the piece, so it's not just you look at it from the front, you, you can look at it from all different angles. So I have to kind of turn it over and tackle it in different positions. I float the layers by just using scrap aluminum. Uh, that way I can kind of position them in place. Like hover them from layer to layer. And then I attach them by using these rivets, using like a pop rivet gun. And I'm really digging on this, the shadows that they create because I feel like, you know, like, that fills in the gaps. That like develops, it, it rounds the piece out. Even though they're like just, they're square pieces, plain stuck together. It's all of a sudden round, you know, like almost like an armadillo. It's like, Boop. I put a couple pieces up, and then I like to re reduce the pieces down to more of what I was thinking of. I'm looking for a certain line. When I first started, I had, I really wanted to work with paper, um, but paper can't hold a lot of weight, and you can't build on top of it very high or I'll just kind of compress. And I tried many different kinds of materials, but aluminum, I was going to the hardware store and I found aluminum. When I first started, I, I was pretty sure that it was gonna work. I had the confidence, because <laughs> it's kind of like paper, but really I didn't like the shininess. I didn't want it to look like the aluminum. And so I used this type of spray paint that makes things look powdery and it kind of transformed it to look more like paper, which is what I originally wanted it to be. I call my pieces uh, aluminum dioramas. Most people have made a diorama when they're like little kids. So that gives people kind of perspective that there are layers or dimensions to it. That's the diorama aspect of it. I had this idea of what environment that I, I want to make, and this one is about the, it's, it's called the poor Mississippi, so it's about the Mississippi, it's about using the river as like a pathway for the eye to travel from one piece to the next. I tried to sketch it out, I use this little narrow graph paper because I'm trying to force myself to not spread out so far. It's hard to draw a, a, a three-dimensional shape with multiple planes, so I just kind of go for the lumps that, that I know I want to be there, like the composition. I made this, there's a sample tree, it looks kind of ugly, it's been through a lot. So what I do is I, I find like scrap, the way I can recycle all the pieces that I use. And then I, I just rivet the pieces together and then once I get the tree shapes that I like, then I can just attach them directly to the. The cool thing about using these trees is that it can help people visualize the perspective. So if this is supposed to be closer and this is supposed to be far away and they're still on the same plane, I can make a giant tree here and a tiny version over there and it'll help people like lay it out in their head. So. <laughs> Okay, let's see, what should I start out with? This film is needed. 
depending on the angle, you know, it's blue and certain angles it's red. I have been working with lights and different light effects and move. Like for instance, I have this piece that's a puddle and there's like grass kind of coming out of it and having the, the grass take over and not just the, you know, the area around the puddle, but the shadows kind of taking up all around it. So it almost grows. And then using that same light effects to kind of make the puddle look like there's different layers of mud. I want the public to enjoy the shapes and the lines. Um, I'd like them to be able to recognize that it is a landscape. I want people to kind of take it out of context from away from the wall and then maybe into their own life or other visions they may have out in nature. It's pretty simple, I guess. Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.